Hello fellow ABS makers. I wanted to explain about potash and different types of lye and what you can expect to get out of them. Lye, as we all know, if you already make soaps, helps oils and water to saponify into creating soap. There are different types of lye. There are lye that specifically makes liquid soaps or soft soaps. Soaps that are pliable like black soap, gel soaps, cream soaps, souffle type soaps. And there are lye that would only make hard bar soaps regardless of what you do, what formula, what combination you do. It would always create hard bar soaps. Now a typical lye that always creates hard bar soaps is a nao, which is caustic soda or sodium hydroxide. And anyone that has any experience making soaps, you will be familiar with. Uh, you'll be ex you'll be familiar with sodium hydroxide. Um, apologies because you will not be able to see the texture of this very well. So sodium hydroxide comes in either liquid, pellets, or flakes. So although what I was trying to show you uh, are in pellets, it can come in any shape at all and it can actually come in powdered form. As long as the packaging or your supplier uh, claims that it is sodium hydroxide, then it is sodium hydroxide. So always remember that sodium hydroxide would always make a hard bar soap. You can't use sodium hydroxide to make black soap despite the fact that you'd have seen videos on YouTube that makes African black soap with sodium hydroxide. You can never make black soap or authentic African black soap with sodium hydroxide. You can only make black soap with uh, potash and potash would always consistently give you soft soap. So in the same vein, you can't make a hard bar with potash. As you would learn uh, on the course, if you set out to make a hard bar version of black soap, then there are two ways of going about it, which is either to make a combination of uh, caustic soda, uh, a combination of sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, or you can solely use potash and use salt to harden your, your bar. So the two types of lye that you would always get are either sodium hydroxides or potassium hydroxides. Potassium hydroxides would always give you soft soap and sodiums would always give you hard bars. And when it comes down to it, sodium hydroxide uh, comes in different versions. So you can get plant source lye that are, a, that are sodiums and you can get plant source lye or mined lye that are Potash. I hope I've not confused you there. I'm just going to uh, show you two examples. So So these are two types of organic potash that can be used in making black soap There are so many different types of organic potash wherever you are in the world there is bound to be a locally sourced organic potash that you can use. You don't have to use the cocoa potash that comes from Ghana to make black soap when you live in Pakistan or India or uh, in a different part of the world, wherever you are in the world, because potash comes from either a mine source or a plant source, you need to look within your locality to find what is local to you. There's always got to be uh, a locally sourced uh, potash source. You don't have to import or um, buy from outside your country. And you also don't have to be making ash. A lot of people are obsessed with peeling plantain and burning it into ash and making their own potash to in order to, to make the soap. For me, you can't scale a business well, you can scale a business like that, but it's not a sustainable way to start a business where you would peel plantain and then burn it into ash or make your ash yourself. One of you guys, one of the guys on the course, um, he set out to make potash on a large scale and I'm happy to say that he's been successful in doing this. He's based in Uganda and over time 
he would be revealed to you guys so that if anyone wanted to buy a uh, plantain potash you can certainly go to him he's not at that stage yet but uh, if you've got plantain a plenty wherever you are in the world and you want to burn your own uh, ash to make your soap you can certainly do that but for me it's this this is not a very good way to go about a business coming back to w what I wanted to address I want you you know uh, African black making African black soap 101 you've got to understand that you can only use potash potassium hydroxide to make black soap in a gel form you can't use sodium hydroxide to make authentic black soap when it comes to what potash will create authentic black soap as long as you use potash then you are well on your way and the potash you use can either be mined or it can be from a plant source and with regards to plant source it doesn't have to be cocoa like I have access to in Ghana it can be from any plant at all if you're struggling to locate organic potash wherever you live I think your first point of call uh, for those in Africa I think things will work similarly as it does in Ghana I think your first point of call would be to go to a government body that gives accreditation or approval for selling soaps if you go to such a body in Ghana, um, ours is called Ghana Standards Authority. Ghana Standards Authority approves and uh, gives a certification for both for any product that's going to be put on the marketplace. And you know, for me, that was my first point of call for trying to locate uh, supplies for for things. So wherever you are, Nigeria, the USA, Kenya, South Africa, India, Pakistan. Go to your local government body that approves and gives certification. Sorry, that gives certification for soaps to be sold on the marketplace. Now, if you go to such a, a body, they would certainly have archives where you can delve into to find what the local live production is like, what is used, and what is already out there. Try and exhaust this first and foremost. If it turns out that there is no organic potash mined or source, sourceable or created where you are in the world then i would advise that you go on to use koh koh is potash i want you to remember this koh is potash potash is koh the only difference is koh is refined potash is still in its organic state and so when you use koh to make black soap you end up with what is commonly called hammam soap the version of abs that comes from the northern part of africa like morocco and algeria that is authentic african black soap all right it's just that it doesn't have the blackened end of it now mind you another thing as well is the texture of black soap depends on the type of oil, oil you use so if you use a fluid oil versus butters only the texture would vary and because the Ghana version of black soap was first to arrive on the world market, most people use the Ghana black soap as the standard for black soap. But there are so many di different versions of black soap that we've met and we haven't met uh, or we've overlooked. And so don't let that be your standard. Uh, don't let the Ghana black soap be your standard, but rather as long as you use potash, you're making a version of black soap you're either making hammam if you use potassium hydroxide and if you use a plant source or a mild sourced potash then you're going to end up with a version of black soap that looks more like the west african type black soap so that's the only difference you can certainly use koh to make black soap now this is a tip i'm only sharing with you guys on the course this is not something i'm putting out there for everybody to access on facebook or youtube or on the blog this is only set in here on the course and as you would learn how to make hammam you're going to be making your own hammam if it's difficult for you to source plant or mind potash all right guys so to wrap up because i tend to go on a little bit so to wrap up to make sure that I've explained this well enough for you to understand there are different types of fly 
but lye falls into either uh, the sodium or the potassium hydroxides. The sodium hydroxides would always give you a hard bar. The potassium hydroxides would always give you a soft version of soap, whether you're aiming for a cream, gel, souffle, or liquid. Potassium hydroxides, potash would always give you soft soap. And when it comes to potassium hydroxides, there's a whole variety of them. You don't have to only rely on the cocoa pot potash that comes from Ghana or that I sell. You can use any potash that you can lay your hands on regardless of wherever it comes from. As long as it's potash, then you know you're on to the right thing. Now, potash is used in cooking. Potash is used in uh, dyeing textiles. Uh, it's used for making uh, tie and dye. It's used in so many industries. And so potash is widely available everywhere in the world. There is nowhere that you can live in the world that you can access potash. You can access one type of potash wherever you are. So the aim of the course is, you know, to make you understand how you can get around the whole black soap uh, manufacturing process and make it in a way that is easy for you wherever you are in the world. All right, catch me on another video soon, okay? Enjoy making your black soap. Bye.